The new iPhones are here, the 16, 16 Plus, 16 Pro, and 16 Pro Max. We're gonna unbox them, and let's talk about these devices. So let's get started. So the 16 starts at 79,900 in India and 799 in the US before taxes. The 16 Plus starts at 89,900 in India and 899 before taxes in the US. Now we've got them in the two new colors, the blue and the teal, and you can see that they look really impressive with the bright and vibrant colors. The other colors are also vibrant this time around. We saw pale colors with the 15, and the 16 brings back that vibrant color palette on these devices. And you also see some new design changes in the 16 and the 16 Plus. So you get the vertical camera layout, which now allows for spatial video capture, which was restricted to pro phones previously. And you also get improvements on the camera. We'll talk about that in just a second. But one of the main features is the camera control, which allows you to not only quickly access the camera, but also control the camera and its functions via a 3D touch-esque interface, which is built on the side of the phone. This has a combination of uh, the taptic engine as well as haptic feedback and it allows you to control with subtle presses the entire mechanism of the camera. It works really well and it is surprisingly easy to learn. You'll be using it in a couple of seconds and you'll get used to the mechanism, especially if you've used 3D touch in the past. Another change is that the mute switch is gone and replaced with the action button. This is something we saw on the pro models previously, is now available on the non-pro models. So as far as outer changes are concerned, those are it. You also get three studio quality microphones. You also get an improved display with an improved ceramic shield, which is considered to be their hardest and toughest ceramic shield as is every year. But I would still recommend that you pop on a screen protector on this device if you want your screens to last a really long time. The display also goes down to one nits. That also saves battery life and uh, the display peaks out at 2000 nits, which is mighty impressive. We still don't get pro motion on the non-pro devices, which is a little bit of a letdown, but you are getting basically similar specifications as far as display technology is concerned, apart from the pro motion. What is a massive improvement is the chip on the inside, the new A18 chip. Not only is it better in terms of CPU and GPU performance, it also enables things like ray tracing, which now allows you to play those AAA titles which were previously locked on the pro devices. You're also gonna be getting Apple intelligence on the 16 and the 16 plus, which is one of the main reasons that this jumped two generations and directly came onto the A18 chip, which like I mentioned is a newer three nanometer process. We're also seeing improvements in terms of battery and thermal management, uh, which is due to the changes on the inside. But we're also going to see the fastest ever charging on the iPhone now done wirelessly through MagSafe 2. So you can get up to 25 watts uh, wirelessly charging your iPhone and otherwise you can continue to use your USB-C cable, which on the non-pro phones is still USB 2, which I think could have been up to USB 3. One of the major improvements is of course the cameras. Uh, the cameras are a new 48 megapixel fusion camera, which allows for uh, 24 megapixel stills from the main camera. And you can also use it as a telephoto without any loss of quality. It'll give you 12 megapixel 2X telephoto shots. And then you also have a new improved ultra wide camera. It's still a 12 megapixel camera, but it does allow for more light through the sensor. And of course you have the true depth 12 megapixel camera on the front. All of these can shoot 4K video at 60 frames per second. And also have this new audio mix feature, which is gonna be available on all of these devices, including the pro phones. And we'll talk a little bit about that at a later stage. Now let's move on to the pro devices. They start at 1,19,000. 900 for uh, the iPhone 16 Pro, which is lesser than uh, the 15 Pro's launch price at 128 gigabyte. And then the Pro Max is available at a base of 256 gigabyte at 1,44,900, which is again, considerably cheaper than what the launch price of the 15 was. So some improvements in price, but nothing compared to the US pricing of 999 and 1199 US dollars before taxes. Now, improvements in size, uh, slightly bigger displays and slightly bigger overall size. So you get a 6.3 inch iPhone 16 Pro and a 6.9 inch nice iPhone 16 Pro Max. Again, this new desert titanium color looks impressive and they've done a lot in terms of thermal management on the inside of the phone, especially by adding a new stack of an aluminum plate along with a graphene sheet, 
which allows for better heat dissipation. And because of the larger size of these devices, we see larger batteries. And because these phones have the new A18 Pro chip on the inside, it does deliver better thermal management and better battery efficiency thanks to the new three nanometer process. We'll also see improvements in the cameras here. You have now a stack of 348 megapixel cameras, the main fusion camera, and you have the 5X telephoto camera, and now a 48 megapixel ultra wide camera. There is also no difference in the cameras between the Pro and the non-Pro phones, which makes choosing the phone easier between the Pro and the Pro Max. All you need to decide is what size is preferred by you. And if you prefer a smaller size and want the 5X zoom, you'll get it on that device. Like previous phones, you continue to get USB 3 uh, on uh, the Pro models, which allows for ProRes video recording on external drives at 4K 60 FPS or 4K 30 FPS natively. You also have improvements in video in terms of a 4K 120 FPS capability, which will come in really handy for a lot of people, especially if they want to do some pro video work directly on the iPhone. Now I had a chance to take it through its paces earlier today and it looks pretty impressive. You still get camera control on the Pro phones as well. So same functionality available on the Pro devices as well. The camera control also allows you to click selfies using the main camera. And you could do that previously sort of with the volume control, but the camera control allows for slightly better functionality from the main camera as well. You're getting fastest ever charging via MagSafe 2 with 25 watts of charging now available on these devices. Now, apart from that 4K 120 FPS, another feature has been added, which I think will be more targeted towards content creators, and that's the audio mix feature. It works really well and allows you to isolate audio with several steps. Here's a demo that explains it slightly better. So when you record a video, you can go into the edit settings and change the audio mix. And there are a few options that you can choose from. So this is what the standard audio sounds like. But then they also have a feature called in frame, which only shows you the audio, which is in the frame. So this is what that sounds like. But then you also have another level, which is a studio sound. And this is what that sounds like. So it makes the audio sound studio quality. And then of course you have a cinematic mix, which will be useful in busy environments or if you're getting like a nice cinematic shot. So you can mix the audio in the foreground and the background with the vocals. And this is what that sounds like. But of course we are in a quiet studio environment. So we don't have a lot going on, but we'll be demoing this a little better when we push out a full review of this. This audio mix feature is going to be really useful, especially for people like us. And uh, we will be testing it again, like I mentioned, a lot more in the coming days. Now cases will need to have special plate that will allow for camera control to work. So if you're thinking of buying a case, make sure it has that plate. Now these phones offer up really interesting improvements, but are they improved enough to jump from the 15 Pro or the 15 Pro Max to the 16 Pro and the 16 Pro Max? Well. Apple Intelligence, which is going to be launching later in the year, will be available on the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max as well. So if you have any of those phones, you can see the other changes that are here in the new devices and take a call, or you can wait for our full review where we'll have a better answer to this. For the 16 and the 16 Plus, if you've been holding on to the 15 and the 15 Plus and want Apple Intelligence, then they make a lot of sense, especially because there are considerable improvements, not only on the outside with the camera control, the action button, and a better battery life, but you're getting really improved internals with the A18 chip, along with better cameras with the 48 megapixel fusion sensor, as well as the new improved ultra wide sensor. Well, what are your thoughts on the new iPhone 16, 16 Plus, Pro and Max? Let us know in the comments below. If you have any questions, queries that you would like us to answer in the full review, drop those in the comment section below as well. If you haven't already subscribed, hit like. If you enjoyed the video, I'll see you guys in the next one.